Welcome to another edition of The Daily Shark. Randy Hahn with Brett Hedekin and Jamie Baker. We are one day away from three weeks ago since the San Jose Sharks last played a hockey game, and we're still up in the air as to whether they'll play another one this season and when that might be. But in the meantime, we want to keep you up to date as best we can and keep everybody engaged talking a little hockey here in the time of year when we'd be getting ready to go into the Stanley Cup playoffs. We've also got your questions from Twitter, and we'll get to those in a minute. But first, guys, I wanted to touch on a couple of positives from this past season. Of course, the Sharks overall didn't have a good year, weren't going to go to the Stanley Cup playoffs, and we could pick that apart all day. But let's go to the other side of the ledger and talk about some good things that happened. And, Hedy, I want to start with you talking about rookie defenseman Mario Ferraro, who broke onto the scene at training camp, won a job on this team, and what a year he had. Yeah, what a year he did have. And Mario Ferraro, for me, like you said, Potter, started in training camp. And I think I remember him saying that, hey, he wanted to come and show everybody, the coaching staff and his teammates, that he was ready to play and ready to play at this level. And it's exactly what he did. And I think the one, I guess a couple of things that come to mind when I think of Mario Ferraro, I think of attitude. That's something you have control of all the time. And his attitude every day was positive. And because of his positive attitude, it gave him the ability to be infectious to his teammates. And his teammates drew to him and wanted him to do well. I think fearless is the other word that comes to mind when I'm thinking of Mario Ferraro. Right from the very beginning of the season, going in the corner with it didn't matter how big the player was, he would step in the corner first without any fear. And I think that's something that will last a long time and take with him in the NHL. The low points maybe during the course of the season, or maybe a tough shift here and there, it didn't bother him too much. He was able to respond and rebound. I think ultimately when you put all that together, it's a player that at the beginning of the year, you probably thought, who is this guy? Particularly for guys like us that are broadcasters that didn't draft him. The guys, the scouts that saw him saw something in him. But what we got to see is what the scouts saw as this year progressed, just a terrific player. I think he's going to be a shark for a long time. And for all the little things that didn't go well, there was too many good things that did. So great stuff for Mario Ferraro. Great take. And I, I agree with you, Hedy. I loved his attitude throughout the season. I mean, let's be honest, this was a tough year for the team. And a lot of um, focus on the problems the team had throughout the year. And this kid kept his attitude in the right place throughout the season. And uh, good on Mario Ferraro and for the Sharks. Uh, drafting him where they did, and this kid uh, really made an impact on the hockey team. I love the penalty kill this year. It was number one all season long. But, Banks, I want to turn to you now and talk about Patrick Marlowe, uh, who we didn't have at the beginning of the season, joined the Sharks early, and uh, then really did have an impact on the hockey team until he left at the deadline. Well, he came in the first game, and the Sharks were struggling. Scores two goals. You know, had not had only been with the team a few days. Um, now, I know he got traded to Pittsburgh at the deadline, and it was going to be a great opportunity. Hopefully it is if they, they do have the playoffs. But there's always the chance that he can come back. So, Hedy, you've talked a, a lot about this, that his leadership evolved by going to Toronto and coming back. You've said it numerous times over the course of the season, and a lot of the stuff you're talking about and we've been talking about is the tutelage he does with young guys. He, he took, we know, I mean, Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner became par, almost part of his family. And, you know, you, 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 he was comfortable here in San Jose. Great player, great teammate, great leader. You get taken out of your comfort zone. It makes you appreciate things, makes you, makes you kind of sit back. It's everything through a different lens, especially when you're playing in Toronto. And then when he comes back, you know, I thought it was great for the fan base. But I just saw a better... Like his, it's not so, so much just his compete level. His three zone game, his two hundred foot game, was so complete. His play away from the puck. Now I'll just share one little story that kind of exemplifies the leadership. And, and these are this is the stuff you don't see very much, you know. And where he's doing it more with young guys. I was standing in the locker room. He'd been here two to three weeks, and it was after practice. Uh, so over at Sharks for America, and. I forget who I was talking to. I was talking to somebody else in the media. And Patty was walking towards the doors to head into the showers. And Mario Ferraro, believe it or not, was just, he had just gotten off the ice and was taking his gear off. And Patty just looked at him and said, hey, Mario, great practice today. You were awesome out there. And Mario goes, thanks. 
and was like, you're a young kid and Patty Marlowe recognizes your practice habits. That feels good. It's good for the confidence. So that's the kind of leadership that he brought behind the scenes throughout the course of the year. All right. Let's uh, get to some of our questions now from Twitter. And we thank all of you for uh, sending them along. Uh, start with something uh, a little on the lighter side. Hetty, I'll ask you this first and then I'll go to Bakes because I already know Bakes' answer. It might be the same as mine. Uh, what is your go-to Netflix and chill during this shelter in place, Eddie, what have you been watching? Um, I've been getting involved in the Homeland. I know I watched Homeland for a while, then it kind of went dormant, but now it's back on. I've been kind of locking in on Homeland and uh, getting getting caught up on that. So Homeland for me right now. Yeah, that's a great series. I'm actually thinking of starting Ray Donovan over again from season one and watching that one. But Bakes, I have an idea. I know what you've been watching because we've been comparing notes. What have you been watching? I've gone. I have. I've. I've watched Tiger King. Oh, Tiger I'm King. Done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. You it's, you powered through the entire first season, or maybe the it, only season. It's it's real, folks. It's a it's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> it's every episode. You're uh, you're like, oh my gosh. And uh, I'm actually now watching the Pacific. I've been really into World War II. Watched both World War II and Color. I watched recently watched Band of Brothers again, and now I'm watching the Pacific. So that's what I'm I'm currently watching. And to give what you an idea, what are you how, doing? How, you're in giant. Well, you're in Tiger King right now, right? Eh? Yeah, I'm I'm in the middle of uh, episode five, so I passed the triple <laughs> wedding episode. stage, and and I'm in the middle of the presidential campaign. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Has, um, he, has he been on John Oliver yet? Uh, yes, he has. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, also, finally, this gives you an idea where I am on things. Uh, I finally finished Game of Thrones. All right, uh, this one for you, Hetty. It's from Barrett. Who can skate backward crossovers better, you or Christy? Uh, my daughter, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> She's now been skating for a while and, uh, you know, 14 and, and just uh, – but, no, I think, you know, Christy, they make a living on – on skating backwards, and that's where I made my living. Actually, I, I think I think my backwards skating was better than my forward skating. So, I mean, I go, I'm going to go toe to toe with her. I'm telling you right now. But, but ultimately, I used to love watching Christy skate. Just a terrific uh, figure skater, and that was one of the things that made me a better player. Is watching her skate. Can I, ask, okay. Eddie? Are they? Is there a different style from a hockey player to a figure skater skating backwards? Well, like a, a few technical much. things that are different. Uh, not really. I think it's all no. the same. I learned to skate uh, from a figure skater, so hopefully I learned the, the proper techniques. Right. I have two words for you. Toe pick. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> Banks, this one's for you. Uh, it's from wave underscore O2. Does having a particular coach still matter in today's NHL? Is it more of a player's league now? Are the Scotty Bowmans of the world uh, gone forever as far as head coaches? Maybe the my way or the highway, Mike Keenan. Uh, Daryl Sutter, who were both devotees at Scotty Bowman. I mean, maybe the styles of the coaching have evolved. Even even co like a Joel Quinville, who's been around a long time, has to evolve the way he coaches. Yeah, it matters a lot. I mean, you gotta put to, you're the one putting the players on the ice. So there's there's the on ice matchups. You have to make in game changes potentially to different you know situations. Uh, it's your systems that the players have to buy into. You look at what Barry Trotz has done in New York for the New York Islanders. Uh, you look at what Rob Brendamore has done in Carolina. Coaches, coaches matter as much as they ever have, potentially more, because a lot of the players play so similar. Everybody can skate well. You know, everybody's skilled, but not everybody thinks the game the same. Like, there was a lot more, I think, more hockey sense back in the day, but there weren't as many guys that could skate well or because everybody had a kind of a role. So I, I think they're as important, but I think the coaches have evolved. So you don't have necessarily as many old school coaches, if you will. You got to communicate with the players. All right, let's move along here. We want to get as many of these in as we can in the amount of time we have. From F Gomez eight, uh, Hetty, would Joe Thornton be the player to benefit most from this layoff? Um, probably not. You know, I think when you get a guy like Joe Thornton, that's uh, I think he was starting to play maybe his best hockey at the end of the season when he was getting more ice time. And now you take all that ice time away and really the training. Although if he is at home right now, continuing to train harder than he's ever trained, um, even though he's always been a hard training, trained guy and trained professional hockey player, 
there comes a point where you know you're you're 40 some years old and you've got to find a way to get your body and you mentioned it earlier bakes outside your comfort zone and how do you take a body that's 40 plus outside a comfort zone well you got to find ways and right now for joe thornton it's finding ways of taking his body to places that it's never been to be ready so if he does want to play another season um that he has taking his body and gotten it ready to play next year. All right, according to Joey, he wants to play at least two more seasons, so we'll see about that. I'll stay with you, Hedy. We want to meet, let's get these quick here. We want to get them in. Uh, Nick asks, if you could have one Sharks player jersey, who would it be and why? Um, I would go uh, Ryan Claw. <laughs> <laughs> I why? like that. Why is because this guy was fun to watch, man. This guy came to play, and you knew when he was in the lineup every night, Ryan Klo for me. Bakes, how about you and it can't be your own? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Chloe, I was thinking this year's team. I'm staying with this year's team. I'm going with uh, I'm going with Jumbo. He's he's the first ballot Hall of Famer. He's one of the greatest players of all time. Great you call. I, it's, yeah. I got to go with Jumbo. All right. All right. I, I, am, I am not going with this year's team. I'm going with a colleague. I'm going with the great number 13, the Baker's dozen, J.B. Baker, uh, score of the greatest goal in Sharks history. There's a picture. No, there's a picture of the wanted. jersey <laughs> mounted in my home office, but I've never been given a jersey, if you know what I'm saying. All right. Well, I'll let you have the final word, Bakes. Uh, question from Steve. Can you give us a quick Gaetan Duchesne story, the late, great San Jose Shark? teammate of yours oh, wow that's awesome what a question how, how many how many people are in his family do you remember how many brothers sisters he had was it nine i don't, or I, don't I don't remember Dan was like nine, nine or eleven he, he was like right at, he was right in the middle he didn't talk much as a child he couldn't couldn't get enough words in because he had so many kids he talked a lot on the team though he talked so much that and i was not part of this somebody said let's everybody threw in money and they paid him 200 bucks if he didn't talk during a team meal, like when we're on the road and I'm like, no, don't do this. And they're like, why? And I'm like, cause then he's going to talk more the rest of the time. Cause he was, he, he was a little thrift too, <laughs> to, to get this. And it, that's what happened. It backfired. So he didn't talk like one, one meal. He didn't talk the whole meal. He, he talked all the time and he didn't talk this one meal, but then that night at the pre at free game he goes he was talking more than normal he goes i'm gonna keep i'm gonna up my ante i'm gonna try and get this thing to 500 bucks that's my gate to Shane story <laughs> All right. great guy One well, of the great, he was a role player a role like a third third line guy that played a thousand games that speaks volumes of the way he played the game like shift in shift out just as consistent as as you can be all right. Well, thanks for all your questions on Twitter. Uh, this has been fun. I think we'll do it again for sure. Keep enjoying hockey, however you are finding it during this uh, unusual yes, yes. time for all of us. Stay healthy. Stay, stay safe, everybody. We'll be back again soon. Until next time, that is The Daily Show.